Welcome to Livestream Stars. I'm Ross Brand. Livestream Stars is the show where we feature talented broadcasters delivering high quality content across live stream platforms. And Livestream Stars is brought to you by LivestreamUniverse.com, where you can find all of our schedules, past shows, and features. We also have daily updates with show recommendations on our Facebook page at Facebook.com slash Livestream Universe. And joining us today, all the way from the UK, where it's very late, and now she's awake for sure after scrambling to get this thing on the air, is Vicki Taylor. Victoria is head of events for Summit Live UK, Live and Social Video and Disruptive Technology Summit, which will make its debut in London in 2017. Vicky's the founder and chief strategist at Blend Social. She helps businesses and brands leverage the social sphere effectively tailoring solutions to suit business need and requirement. And Vicky has worked with major brands such as Lamborghini, Mercedes, Land Rover, and many more. Uh, you can find Vicky on Snapchat at Victoria Tail UK, T-A-Y-L-U-K. Also Victoria.live online and SummitLiveUK.co.uk. So after all that, welcome, Vicky, and it's so great to have a chance to chat with you. <laughs> thank you, and thank you for having me on as well. Yeah, we got so many people here already. You're a very, very popular person. Um, so tell me about what's coming up with um, Summit Live. I know they had the Periscope Community Summits in the U.S. It's now Summit Live, and they're expanding to the U.K. What's, uh, what's going on, and what are you working on? Yeah, it's um it's exciting. So I've I've went to both Periscope. Well, I went to the first Periscope Summit in New York, um, and then I went back to speak at the second one, and um, when it was rebranded to Summit Live, which was awesome because obviously all these different live streaming platforms were coming into play. So it rebranded and changed the name, and then um, Ryan and I spoke, and he said, well, you know, we'd love to do this in the UK. How do you feel about it? So um. Yeah, that's it. So it's coming to London. Um, it's very exciting. And over the sort of next sort of couple of months, you're going to see lots of different bits and pieces coming out, different speakers, um, different bits on the agenda. So um, I'm just really excited about it all. Really excited because it's it's cool for London to have something like this. Definitely. And and in, in London and the UK in general, and even maybe more broadly in Europe, How's live streaming taking it off, taking off, say, compared to in the U.S.? Is it is it more popular, less popular? Um, I actually think like with with people within our industry, so that you know there are people using it exceptionally well um, over here in the U.K. Like without question, they're using it amazingly. But is it as big as it is over in the states? No, I don't think it is. Which I think presents us with a huge opportunity um, over here to provide that education around it, the benefits of it, what it can do from SME level right up to brand levels. So um, I think, you know, I think there's a lot of opportunity over here and it's the perfect time to have this kind of summit over in the UK. That's great. Tell everybody again when, when it's coming up and how they can find out more information about it. Yeah, so it's coming up. Um, it's on the. It begins on the 27th of March to the 29th of March, um, and you can find all the details at summitliveuk.co.uk. Um, tickets are on sale now, um, and it's actually the last day of early bird sales tomorrow. So mm -hmm. um, yeah, and then the prices go up. So um, oh wow. Yeah. Yeah. So can you give us a little preview, maybe, of who might? I know you probably can't release everything, but who maybe some of the speakers are, or any of the speakers. Or? So sorry. All I can tell you is that we've got a very exciting speaker being announced tomorrow, um, which is great. Thank you, Adam, for putting the link, the link in there. Um, yeah, we um, we have got another speaker that we're announcing tomorrow. I can tell you that he is from the um, disruptive technology side of things because the summit is going to be split into sort of three areas. So the overarching theme is customer experience, um, and that's split into three different areas. So that's video. Um, live and disruptive tech. So the speaker that we're announcing tomorrow is on the disruptive tech side of things. Um, we made a very exciting announcement on Friday um, that Stephen Bartlett is going to be speaking at the event. Um, so for anyone that doesn't know Stephen Bartlett, go and check him out everywhere. He's amazing. He's a 24-year-old CEO of a company called Social Chain. Um, he has built a 
this incredible, I'm not just going to say business because that even doesn't do it justice, but it's this culture that he's built around the people that work with him. Um, he's a complete inspiration. We're so excited to have him speaking at the summit. So, um, oh, wow. So that is somebody you could tell us about. That's, that's very exciting. It's, it's very, very exciting. Obviously, we've got Snap Happen speaking as well at the event. Um, you know, following their hugely successful event, we've got a great relationship with the boys over there. They had an amazingly successful event. And, um, yeah, we're we're very excited for, for the people that we've got lined up so far. So, right, yeah. right. And you mentioned both live video and social video. Can you talk yeah. about what you consider the distinction between live video and social video? Yeah, so, I mean, for, you know, for, for this purpose, we're distinguishing it as, you know, anything that we're, we're classing under live is like live stream, and, you know, Facebook Live, right. Periscope, Busker, um, social video, you know, Instagram video, Facebook video, uh, Snapchat, uh, Twitter right. video, anything that's not in the live capacity. So it's kind of both, yeah, both strands, really. Yeah. I, lo I love that term because Snapchat is almost live streaming, right? You, you, you take yeah. the snap and then two seconds later, unproduced, unedited generally. I mean, some people know how to do some, some fancy stuff, but generally then it just goes out to everybody. So social video is a perfect term. You no longer have to decide is Snapchat live streaming, is Instagram stories live streaming. It's all social video and it all kind of fits, fits together nicely. Um, are you guys going to be doing anything with um, virtual reality or augmented reality? I know Ryan Bell's very, very big on uh, VR. We are indeed. We are going to have, um, so we're going to have part, part of the disruptive technology section will be about virtual reality and um, augmented reality. And actually, one of the speakers that we're, well, the first one that we're going to be announcing tomorrow, um, he's going to be talking around that topic. Um, we've also got Ryan, obviously, that's very heavily involved in that area. Um, so it's it's really exciting. Like, it brings a smile to my, my face every time I talk about it because it's, um, it, it's such an exciting content plan that we've got at the moment. And we're just trying to release it bit by bit to keep people excited, keep people involved. Um, so yeah, it's going to be good. That's great. Um, have you heard from anybody who's going to be attending from the U S or even further away? Like what's the furthest you've heard from somebody that they're going to yeah. be attending? Um, all, yeah. I mean, all we can go back. Oops, sorry. My light's falling over here. All we can go by is that, um, you know, right now, um, so the ticket, the ticket sales are going great. Um, you know, in the first week, we, we sold 12% of our ticket sales. Um, I can tell you that there's people that have bought tickets from Europe and America. Um, and we've had people reaching out to us from Australia as well. So. Oh, amazing. So for people who might be coming to London for the first time or might not be familiar um, with London, what can you tell us a little bit, like what neighborhood is it going to be? What What is there to do in the neighborhood? What's it? What's the whole experience going to be like? you know, for yeah. people visiting for the first time. Okay, so um, the, the the venue where we're holding the event is the, the Science Museum, which in itself is just like jaw-droppingly beautiful. It is stunning. It's a beautiful museum. Um, the event is going to be held in their IMAX theatre, um, and there's going to be different events going on um, in, the, in the different galleries of the museum. So the opening networking event is going to be held in um, one of their biggest, most iconic galleries, which is Making of the Modern World. Um, it's got all different transport um, systems from like the beginning of time, which is just beautiful to see it all in one place. And then that's situated in the borough of Kensington, which is actually where the royals take their residence. So it's one of the richest boroughs in the whole of London. It's beautiful. Um, it's got beautiful hotels. Um, it's got just beautiful surroundings. You know, there's great shopping. There's lovely restaurants. Um, we're going to have a good old London knees up, as we call it. Um, right. We're going to have a good old London knees up. We're going to we're going to show you the sights, the sounds, and the the special sights of London. So yeah, you're you're gonna you're gonna enjoy it. That's yeah. great. So how how long have you been working on this in, in preparation? I know putting on events is a very big undertaking, having done some myself. And yeah, I'm just curious, like, <laughs> yeah, you look wide awake. It's 12 <laughs> noon. I think I scared. I mean, it's 12 midnight. Right. I think I scared the life out of you by uh, <laughs> trying to get on this platform. So you look alive. You look like you're wide awake now. Um, it's a lot of work. So, you know, just a little idea of what it's been like, how long you've been at it, and, and that kind of thing. Yeah. So um, I have been, um, so I 
we had the discussions with Ryan back in March, um, well, February, March time, and we came up with the uh, the idea that we're going to bring this to the UK. He asked me to head up the event in the UK. Um, so, yeah, I've been heading it up over here ever since and right. working the way behind the scenes because um, I, I run my businesses as well. So, And you know yourself, when you're putting on an right. event, it's it's incredibly hard work. You're speaking with people left, right, and center, um, but it's it's amazing. So um, yeah, Joe's saying here, <laughs> weight helps planning everything, and it actually does. I've done a lot of fitness lately, and um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's so awesome. it's good. It's getting you into shape. It's keeping you busy, <laughs> keeping you off yeah. the streets. No. Um, it's really keeping me off the streets. So someone down the side here is saying, I think Vicky is part of the summit live. And yeah, so I am. Um, I had it up in the UK. So yeah, this is this is our event over here, which is exciting. Yeah, that's 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 awesome. Um, obviously, in some capacity, the event's going to be live streamed, right? Um, either yeah. so, uh, if people can't make it to the event, is there a way that they can participate online, or they can watch the the speeches, or? Yeah, I mean, right now, um, we're working on lots of different concepts to make it, again, remember, this is all about customer experience. The event right. is about experiencing the experiences we create. So at the moment, we're in talks about different ways that we can do production on this at the event and how we can make it a little bit special. Um, so yeah, there's, there's there's all kinds of options that we've, we've not quite settled on yet. Um, but as the, like, the months go on, it will become clearer and clearer. Um, but yeah, in some capacity, it will be streamed. And also, we've got to remember as well, this is a museum. So our hands are tied a little bit with the right. supply right. can use because of the artifacts. So we have to make sure it's all within like the capabilities of the museum. But yes, there are plans to, to live stream. Right, right. And I imagine being so busy pre prepping for the event, you actually probably haven't had as much time to be on social yourself as you'd like to be. But you're still pretty active on Snapchat. You've been uh, telling great stories on Snapchat for a long time. Um, I, I feel like I know your mom from watching your Snapchat. <laughs> She'll love, she will love you saying that. She loves She's famous. <laughs> You've made her famous. She's become famous. Um, yeah, she's funny. She says she's better on Snapchat than I am. So, um, yeah. She's a good is, is, she gets involved. She gets it, involved. Is is that your favorite platform? Um, it is actually, and you know, what? I feel a little bit like I've um rejected it a little bit lately because just just from a time point of view, I'll get on there when I can. Um, and I think oh, I'm just gonna see Rachel later. Um, I think you know, consuming as much. I think you know when you're sort of in and out of meetings and stuff. I feel a little bit guilty for not being in there as much, you know, and being on there as much. But you just do what you can when you can, don't you? Right. Um. But yeah, it, I would say without question, Snapchat has probably brought me the most incredible friendships and relationships than any other platform. Um, like Adam here in the comments, you know, Adam, Joe, like amazing guys that I speak to, um, you know, on Snapchat and yourself, you know, there's so many people that right. relationships just become deeper and deeper and it, you know, it's got me speaking gigs, Snapchat. So, you know, it, it, it's... <laughs> it's an amazing platform like who'd have thought you know and how how easy or difficult is it to get businesses to think about the possibility of going to snapchat or do they come to you and say we want to make use of snapchat but we have not a good idea of what we should be doing with it you know where does that all fall out with businesses yeah, so I think, you know, I think specifically, I mean, I talk about strategy across like multi-platforms. So it tends to be something that does come into the conversation, you know, because now, you know, video is a huge part of social strategy. So I would never force a platform on anybody. You know, it ultimately has to be a client's decision, but I'll always advise on something that I feel would be relevant for a particular client. Um, so yeah, I mean, Snapchat 90% of the time comes into the conversation. Um, wow someone to get involved with as well you know like if you're going to do something you might as well do something you enjoy right so absolutely yeah, yeah. so um uh, mitch jackson asks uh, an interesting question what is the most popular live streaming platform in the uk and in europe in general um i wouldn't i wouldn't be able to answer that really i'm not really entirely sure i think i think again you know we can make generalizations and say that you know it's 
it's Facebook or it's Periscope. Um, I think certainly, you know, brands perhaps lean tend to lean towards Facebook more than they do Periscope, um, just because of the nature of Facebook and the, you know, the fact that it's it's more. I think it's got more of a, an established audience. I think um, brands feel more comfortable with Facebook because it's been around longer, you know. Um, but in terms of, you know, I think it's everybody makes a personal choice, right? And that could even be on the the day or the week or the month so it changed this space changes so fast you know right, i don't think right, we right. can become very platform specific i think we do what works to build communities so so what do you think it takes to be good at snapchat like have you noticed the commonality amongst people who are good storytellers on snapchat that you know yeah. other people who might be new to it can look at and say this is how i can learn to make effective use of it either to build my brand or just to connect with people and have fun or, you know, maybe even to help my business grow. Yeah, I think, I think, I mean, there's lots of things. I think, um, driving emotion, emotion is a big one. Um, I think if you can connect with somebody emotionally, um, automatically you're, you're connected with somebody. Um, so for example, Adam Karen counts in the chat here, he like, there are times when I have watched his Snapchat stories and I've cried watching them because I have felt so um, connected, so touched by the stories that he's telling that I just can't help but cry and share that emotion of this, that particular story. You know, Adam's incredibly good at um, recounting stories from the Red Stag, which um, was his you know restaurant. And the, the, like the stories that come out of it, they're so personal. And, you know, for me, that connection with the emotion and the way Adam tells the story is beautiful. So I think, you know, the, the emotion is absolutely 100% one of the biggest draws for me. If you can connect with something in that way, then, you know, incredible. I think um, being funny as well. You know, there are some Snapchats <laughs> out there that are in, incredibly funny. Um, there's a guy called um, Inadequate Chris. And there's also, who actually won Best Newcomer of the Year at um, the Snap Happen Awards. He's incredible. He's hilarious. He cracks me up. He's so funny. Um, there's also a guy called Nick Robertson who was who headed up Snap Happen with Craig. Now, Nick is exceptionally talented in the way he tells a story. You know, he he actually varies like the lengths of his snaps which you might think why does that make a difference but it actually does like Nick will turn his face in a different direction and he will maybe have a one or two second video and then he'll switch directions so it's almost like he's queuing himself in for the next snap and he's exceptionally talented with the way he makes it flow um so it comes down to technique as well and you know being at snap happen there were guys that you know they use the um assistive touch so you can use the assistive touch so you're not um so you're creating commands which means right. that when you're on snapchat you can create commands um whether that's like a zoom in or a zoom out quickly there's so many different things you can do just to create effects and some of the talent out there blows me away on snapchat so um yeah it's my it's mind-blowing what people are doing with it and when you do your snaps, do you use any kind of um, equipment with it? Any like uh, selfie stick or tripod or anything like that for your stories? Yeah, I mean, sometimes I'll, I'll pop it on my, my mount um, or my selfie stick. Um, I have a Lumi case that I use on um, my phone. Um, filters, are, like obviously I use the filters. We love the Snapchat filters. Um, but no, not, not especially in terms of anything else, no. I just think you kind of point and go, right? Yeah. I <laughs> uh, just okay. want to give it. Give a shout out quickly to everybody watching on Facebook. If you want to come over and ask Vicky a question or participate in our chat over here at Blue Jeans, uh, just go to rossbrand.live and you can jump in and ask a question in the chat or even come on air with us. Um, Vicky Taylor is from Summit Live UK getting ready for the big event in March 2017. It'll be in London and you know, when you look at, at at events like this, talk about the importance of community. I mean, we're we're kind of like the live streaming social video folks. Uh, the early adopters have become kind of a community on online. 
but there aren't that many opportunities to actually get together with people and, and meet in person. There's some events, um, but obviously distance. What makes it special is we can we can reach out across oceans and across, you know, continents, but we're also in terms of getting together, it isn't easy. So, you know, kind of talk about the importance that events like Summit Live can play in in solidifying the community that's being built online by getting people together. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. I was having this conversation the other day with somebody, you know, about business, you know, business in general. And our our businesses have have grown like dramatically over the last 12 months and our friendships have grown. It's, it's grown in both ways. And it's like everybody that I surround myself with wants to help each other. And events like this just solidify those relationships. They make them stronger. You know, I mean, we all kind of like, like Adam from over in Canada, I've never met him, but I feel like I've known him all my life, you know, and that, that isn't something that would have been possible before. You know, it's not something that would have been possible. And I think when we get to these events, it's kind of like everybody just jumps in together as though they've they've known each other forever, you know? And the community is strong and it's power it's really powerful. It's quite euphoric actually going and seeing everybody together in that environment. And yeah, it's special. Yeah, that's that's amazing. Um and so are there certain um hotels or bars or, you know, sort of official locations um, in addition to uh, the venue where the, the speeches are going to be, where people are going to be congregating in the, in the off hours and hanging out where you can go and see people from the conference? Yeah, so we're going to, at the moment, we're, um, we're, what we're actually doing is negotiating the best rates we can possibly negotiate on the hotels in the area. Um, so we're, we're actually speaking with four hotels right now. Um, there will be um, a speaker hotel. Um, there will be um, hotels where lots of people are able to stay around the area. We're just getting the very best deal possible, and then, then they'll be up there on the website so people can go and book their rooms. So, But there's plenty of time right now, plenty of time. That's awesome. So what else, um, uh, you know, I, I, that's going on with social media right now, social video, disruptive technology, are you excited about as far as, um, you know, going to be discussed at the conference and, you know, maybe you'll have a speaker to address or just a, a session on or a panel or something? Yeah, I think what I'm excited about the most is what excites me is that we, we are, there is no question about it, we are in a time right now where technology is moving quicker than we can keep up with, right? Every single day there is something new happening. There is something that we need to um, adopt to, learn, which I, I absolutely agree we should be doing that. We should be keeping our eye on the latest trends and understanding where things are moving. But I think what is really important and what personally I'm looking forward to is sort of almost stripping away that technology looking at the technology looking at the platforms looking at how they work but looking at the real why and the the like why we use them you know and, and what experience looks like to people and how we use those technologies not as the not as the forefront but as the vehicle to be able to create experience so take putting the focus more on the person but using the technology as the process so as a person who's been, you know, very into Snapchat and, and really yeah. passionate about the platform, using it for business, for personal, um, what did you make of Instagram going to Instagram stories? I went on it once. I did three Insta, whatever they are, and I didn't continue. I didn't like it. So, mm -hmm. I mean, you know, I, I think – Everything's got a place. And again, you've got to decide. I think you've got to decide what's right for you. But personally, for me, like Instagram is where I go to look at photos. So for right. me, it kind of do, do I really go to Instagram to watch people's stories? No, not really, because I don't. It's not the place where I want to be looking at stories. So I th and I think this is the problem that I'm starting to see now is that, you know, platforms are platforms are trying to compete with others with each other so much that they're almost becoming a bit homogenized. They're all trying to do the same thing as the other platforms. So they're almost like losing their identity a little bit. Right, right. Um, you know, Mitch made, made an interesting point in the chat. Um, 60 Minutes, a uh, big news show here in, in the U.S. Uh, magazine show on Sunday nights, had a story, I don't know if you saw, but it was about influencers and it talked about influencers on Snapchat and other platforms 
who are making huge money. They interviewed uh, Gary Vaynerchuk, who basically said, like, in the time that I'm doing this interview or whatever, in five minutes or whatever, three new, you know, three new influencers have come along and started their first video or their first <laughs> their first yeah. image or, or whatever, their first post and are going to go on and they can make huge money. And, and he talked about how it gives people access who don't have to break down traditional doors to broadcasting or movies or whatever, but they can, they can show off their skill, even if they're not the best in the world. And if they come up with something, there's a lot of opportunity for people to make money, uh, you know, using Snapchat, Instagram and, and, and other platforms. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. Look, I mean, the world is a lot bigger than the social media world that we're confined to. And, um, you know, I've, I've met some incredible Snapchat creators over the last couple of months that are making money and people that are getting crazy numbers of opens on their snaps. And I mean, hundreds and thousands of opens on their snaps. They've built communities. There's some great Snapchatters in the UK that are just absolutely flying with it you know um so i think it's important to like look outside the industry we're in as well and be really aware that you know the social media world is very small actually and there is a big there is a big world outside of that world that exists and people that are doing incredible things you know incredible and and let's be honest some people are doing things that you know for people who let's say are older they're more established in their business or whatever it may not feel comfortable taking those risks because some people have made themselves famous by being extremely silly. And obviously, as people get more established, like it's fine for a 21 year old who hasn't, you know, maybe worked a job in his life or whatever to, to be doing splits all over the world. <laughs> It's silly thing. But, you know, there's there's obviously ways that, you know, people who don't maybe want to sort of play a clownish character or whatever can still use those platforms to to build a, a following can you think of maybe some people who are you know there's some in the chat right now like mitch jackson's a great example of you know somebody who takes the law communication business marketing and he gives he gives great advice out on his snaps and you know nick always goes black and white when he's got a funny sarcastic story. So he like distinguishes it from, from himself. I'm just thinking out loud, you know, about some of the people that I see who do, you know, stuff that I really enjoy on Snapchat. Yeah. I mean, are you asking like who I enjoy or like, who? Yeah, I guess what I'm asking is, um, you know, the, the piece on 60 minutes really pointed to some people who are doing ridiculous stuff that perhaps we wouldn't necessarily want to do clownish stuff, you know, uh, slapstick stuff that, you know, somebody who is an attorney or is, you know, has a marketing business or has a social media business and is working with major brands may not want to be ridiculous to that point or may not want to risk hurting their brand. And yet yeah. there's still ways, bless you, there's still ways um, in which they can make an impact and develop a following on platforms like Snapchat without going to those extremes. I guess that's what I'm trying to say. Uh, is it is it all the people who are making the big money, the ones who are being crazy, or are people able to build businesses, build their brands, and, and do things by being a little more cautious about what they put out there, I guess I'm saying. <laughs> I actually don't think it's anything to do with um, the actual content, to be honest. I mean, look, we, we, we go on it to consume the content, but when I, right. like, everything fits naturally with who a person is. So, like, you know, for someone to say slapstick humor, well, to who? To the particular person talking about it? Yeah, absolutely. But you know what? If I'm 21 years old and I can go and make a ton of money or work with big brands, then hats off, you know? And I think, like, hats off to be able to go and do that because that, that, that's fantastic, you know? Um, and I think, you know, flipping it around, you know, you've got, like, Ted Rubin, who is, you know, Ted Rubin's a, a dear friend. Um, huge respect for Ted Rubin. He's incredible. He just takes you on his whole life journey on Snapchat. He's amazing. Right. Um, so I think, I think the thing is, is that everybody uses it differently to their personalities you know you you can never be somebody that you're not right you just right. have to be who you are and when you're comfortable with who you are and you're comfortable with how you're using something then naturally people become attracted to you and how you use something right right and you yeah. must get that when businesses are 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 
trying to venture into Snapchat, there's a concern. Will I make a mistake? Will I hurt the brand? Or, you know, if I have one of my employees doing it, how do I sort of stay on top of what they're doing? Uh, you know, how do you how do you work with them to get past that? Or how do you work with them to sort of have certain checks in place so that they know that the content that they're putting out is serving the brand and not destroying it? <laughs> Again, though, I think it's almost like letting go of that. I am I feel like I'm in a very sort of spiritual, peace-free kind of place right now, Ross. And I think, right. like, you know, as business owners, we, we, like, we have to be real, you know, and sort of, you know, for people to say, oh, we have to be on brand. I think the beauty of Snapchat is it's at the in-between moment. It's right. those moments that aren't necessarily where we're sat behind a desk picking up a phone or standing in a, a courtroom doing the job we do in a courtroom or, you know, standing, sitting in a client meeting. It's those moments that are kind of like, do you know what? These are the little bits that you're not going to see on Instagram or right. the bits you're not going to see on Facebook. So I think it's just making people feel comfortable, I guess, with knowing that it's okay to just like relax a little bit and knowing that it's fine to just sit back, relax and not take things too seriously because life isn't all serious, you know? Right, right. And these are the questions, you know, I hear from people who, you know, are thinking about using different yeah. social media for their business is always the concern, will it, will it do more good than bad? Will it do more bad than good? And it, it's interesting to see how different businesses go about it. But I think one commonality for all sorts of social video is what you were saying. It's a chance to connect with the real person. And that's going to speed up the process of, you know, getting sales, getting people interested in talking about your business. Um, but it's, it's also the access, right? It's like you were saying, it's the quiet moments. It's the moments behind the scenes. It's that little bit of access that you're giving people that they would not get otherwise through more formal platforms and channels and things. Yeah, I think it is, you know, and I think that Snapchat certainly for, for me, you know, has provided a place where I've been able to connect with people at a much deeper level. Um, and I think, that that has sort of populated over to other platforms. You know, I won't say anybody's name, but I I posted quite um quite a, a personal status on Facebook actually a couple of weeks ago about you know through my life I've gone through phases of anxiety and depression earlier on where you know it's the the day where we were raising like um mental like mental health awareness. So I put a post on there. And, you know, all of a sudden I'm getting Snapchats from people saying, thanks so much for opening up on Facebook. I wanted to share this story with you. I wanted to tell you about what I've gone through in my life. And it's like, it's not necessarily always about the story that you're posting. It's about yeah. those conversations that you're taking offline. And I think, like, if we apply that to business, there is so much power there. You know, we can bring conversations over from other platforms. It doesn't necessarily have to be you know, um, either something to do with um, mental health or an emotional topic. There is real power in being able to sort of, when you've got such an engaged community, to, to be able to deepen those conversations, you know? It was almost like from going from Periscope to Blab for me. I was like, oh my goodness, there's a break here between Facebook and Snapchat. And I was seeing a lot coming across. So... You know, it's it, for me, it's just been priceless, priceless. Yeah. And I, I think that's one of the amazing things about live streaming, maybe social media in general, but but definitely about live streaming and social video platforms like Snapchat is that it's become OK, not only OK, but it's become beneficial to share your story and it makes people want to do business with you more, not less. Like in the past, it was always like, oh, you you're you went through something. Okay. Keep that private. That's nobody's business. And if they know, then they'll see it as a weakness or whatever. And instead it's like, we see people, wow, this, this super talented person that I'm chatting with went through struggles, just like everybody else has done, just like I have and whatever. And it's like, okay, not, not a, if anything, it makes you feel more connected to that person and more, you know, more, more wanting to work with them. It's like, okay, they're a real person just like I am and they have ups and downs and good days and bad days. And at the end of it, their their ability to share that and be vulnerable and be open with people means that they're probably not going to hide some little detail about doing business with them. or what. I, I mean, do you think that there's a connection when people can be open on these platforms 
and talk about themselves and share themselves, that they're more likely to be open and honest in how they deal with customers and clients and business partners? Or am I getting too kumbaya? <laughs> You know, to... Not at all. I mean, not at all. I mean, look, we all go on, on different journeys. And I think, I think absolutely, look, for me, I want to do business with people that are transparent, open and honest. And for me, if you, you don't fall into that, then I'm not interested. I'm not going to do business with you. Um, and likewise, you know, I think like personally for me, I what shift I have seen is that I think probably probably just before the first Periscope Summit, when we all first started using Blab, and there were a lot of sort of cliche statements, you know, a lot of cliche statements that were coming out from lots of people, marketers, these sort of like, I can't even think of any off the top of my head now, but it was like, you need to do this or you need to do that. It was always right. advice of how you need the, the cliche catchphrases. But I think what we're seeing now is not those cliche catchphrases anymore, but people actually being that rather than preaching it, people being it. And that's the difference. And right, I think that's, right. where people, that's where people are winning because rather than people like telling you that you just need to be genuine or you just need to be yourself or you just need to tell your story, people are telling their stories. People are being genuine. People are being themselves. They're not telling you to do it. They're just being it. Right. And I don't think anybody loved Blab more than I did. But one yeah. of the things that I've noticed over the last several months is that the people who are serious about doing shows and communicating on platforms such as Blab, it, the quality of the content has gone up since Blab went away because yes. Blab made it very easy to always have an audience with discovery and people just coming in and out of your shows and your broadcasts. But now people have to think about connecting. How am I going to connect with people outside? Because nobody's going to come to Blue Jeans unless I am connecting in other ways with people. So you think about your content much more, but you also just think about it being one part of a larger picture on how you're interacting with people. And I think people have given a lot more thought to the quality of the shows that they do, um, whether it's quality production or whether it's quality content or structure. I think it's 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 actually made sort of people force people to get better because it's blab made it almost too easy does that make sense yeah i totally agree i think you know technology has so many amazing um so many amazing benefits absolutely and you know i always like to look at the positive side of things i'm, I'm quite a positive person but technology has also made us lazy um, right. you know, technology sometimes too much tech and i think you know with blab it was it was very much it was a beauty for me it was a beautiful passage of time it was this gorgeous like however many months it was where right. all of those of us who experienced it went on this journey together and it was just a lovely lovely like once in a lifetime experience it was beautiful right but it got to the point where it was almost disintegrating the conversation wasn't really that valuable anymore in my opinion it was starting to become too too samey there was too it, it wasn't particularly you know we produce shows on there and the content wasn't the same level of content in terms of how valuable it was so i think that you know i think it was the right time for it to go when it did um and i think it, right. you know it, it was amazing but i agree with you i think it almost dumbed down conversation a little bit we'll, we'll always have blab and that that we'll little always connection have <laughs> we'll always, have blab. always have blab yeah yeah um, Adam Purcell says, um, Vicky, when you meet a Snapchat connection in real life, do you feel uh, like that awkward first contact is non-existent? You feel like you're truly old friends. And I can say the same thing from Blab. I, I met somebody a few days before I met them in real life, and it was already like I was meeting best friends. And people I met through Blab, it was like I'm, they might have had five people watching their Blab, but to me, they were famous. Like, it's like, <laughs> So yeah. that's, that's just, just one of the cool things. Um, I think it about... is. And I think people are like, there's no barriers there. It's like, you know, like I was saying, you, you've got to look at the positives of what this technology has done for us as well. It's like that very first meeting is not like a first meeting. You know, it's made business much easier to do. It's made friendships much easier to establish because people kind of know you already.
Right, right. Yeah, Joe Wilson says um, the show that he started on Blab has continued every week for one year this Sunday. So, first of all, congratulations, Joe, on on going a year. That's awesome. Um, and it's same thing for a lot of us. I mean, we've just continued. Maybe we haven't done it every single week, but we've continued to, you know, pursue what we were doing on Blab, but just using other platforms and different means. And I, I think that's maybe more than anything what Blab did is it opened our eyes to what was possible in terms of how we can communicate and the idea of using webcams and, you know, that that type of software to to do broadcasting, really. I mean, it's a combination, right, of social media and broadcasting. And when it came together like Blab, it was special for a short period of time. Um, but now people are have upgraded the broadcasting side of it, and it's not just about the marketing anymore. It's about the stories that you're telling, the interviews that you're doing, the people you're talking with. And that's, I think, what's made things, what the, what's made it really, really great what's going on right now. And, you know, these are the kind of conversations, obviously, people will be having at Summit Live and, you know, and, and elsewhere. Are you going to be coming to the to the Summit event in Los Angeles? Plan to. Yeah, I plan to be there. Um I say that so long as Summit Live UK is all in place and everything else right. is all good to go, because that will be like literally a month before ours. Um, so, you know, so long as everything is all smooth and, and there, I plan to be there. Um, I think they plan to have me speak there as well. So, Right, right. Anything else you're working on you want to talk about or anything you want to you wanna just go ahead and give a shout out to? Uh, do, do you know what? Rather than like anything I'm working on, it, it's more just to say thank you to everybody because like you would not believe the amount of support, you know, whether it's just like a message or, you know, Joe, um, Joe Wilson here sent me a message the other day, you know, sort of saying, I, I said to Joe, you know, I'm, I'm sorry, I don't feel like I've been very um, interactive with people on Snapchat. I've said the same to Adam, you know, and both of them have said, you know, we know how busy it is and, you know, there for support happy to support you people sending over sponsorship referrals people people doing all kinds of stuff bending over their backs to help us so just to just to say a massive thank you because the power of community is just it's incredible you know incredible yeah, so, yeah well, thank you so much for coming on i know it's late there it's about one in the morning so you probably want to get to sleep and i scared the life out of you making it difficult to get on this platform no, it's been lovely to talk to you but it's it's awesome and it's it's been a long time coming and I'm so glad that that we were able to find the time to do this. Um, Joe Wilson, I don't want to give out the wrong information. Asked uh, about when Summit Live in LA is. I believe it's February, right? It is, yeah, it is. It's in February and the venue is beautiful, absolutely beautiful. I'll just pop the um the link in here at the bottom so you've got it there. So we've got Summit Live. Um, oh, do I need to put the link? Um, that's all right. It's summit.live. Everybody can remember that. Summit.live. And, and just type I'll that into your browser. Yeah, there you go. Daryl's got it. Thanks, Daryl. Daryl's put in the UK one there. So that's cool. Thank you. So thanks to everybody for joining us. This is a great, great turnout, great chat. Thank you, Vicky. I'll let you go and get some rest, but uh, we'll continue the conversation, hopefully in person at one of the Summit Live events. I'd love to. Yeah, I'd love to. <laughs> And thank you to everyone in the comments as well. Do you know what's so strange is that you become out of practice. And that's what I've noticed today. Like, I remember sitting on Blab and I was typing, talking, typing, talking. And right. do you know what? I'm really out of practice with doing it. And I'm like, okay, this this feels strange. Isn't it funny how you create habits? Right, um, right. Yeah. So I'm, I'm trying to watch the comments at the same time. <laughs> It's a little bit of a challenge. It still is to to both follow the comments and stay up and and stay connected to what what the conversation is and not lose either one. <laughs> I know we used to do it all the time. So there you go, there you go. All right. Well, thanks everybody. We we really appreciate you jumping in and, and chatting with us tonight. And thank you, Vicky. Have a have a great night. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Good night, everybody. Good night.